G'day, my name's Darrell Webb. Today we're going to have a look at the Wild Gutter NR1 Night Vision Monocular Firearms Add-on. Today we're going to go over some of its um, specifications. Um, we'll talk about its build quality. The normal stuff I sort of do with my reviews. Um, and I'm going to start off by saying this is probably the most impressive night vision add-on I've ever used with some of its features and its performance. But in some other ways, it's very frustrating. Probably the most frustrating one I've used. Anyway, on that note, let's get into it. Okay, so when you get it, it comes in this nice little semi-hard pack. Um, there's some tools in there, strap. Um, there's a little CD disc. There is a micro USB charging lead. Um, in the top here, the micro USB charging lead actually comes in there. And there is a scope mount. Um, for mounting on the scope, it's currently on one of my firearms, so it's not in there at the moment, but that is provided with it. And there is the unit itself. Alright, slide this case out of the way. Okay, so, um, I'll start off with, I'll just go over some of its specs, some, some of its sort of key features. It's got 1 to 24 times magnification. Now, um, 1 to 8 of that magnification is optical, the rest is digital. Um, on the front, it has dual... IR laser um, torches, so infrared light. So one is 850 and one is 950. Now the reason they sort of do that is, is the 850 creates quite a red glow. Um, animals may see it. Um, the 850 doesn't actually go as far, but it creates virtually no glow. So you know it's different situations there. Um, it has a 400 meter infrared range. Um, the video output resolution is 1920 by 1080. Um, it has Wi-Fi inside, you can turn the Wi-Fi on in the menu and you can connect your phone to it and that way you can just download um, video straight from the device to your phone, you don't need to take the SD card and things like that out. Also, you can live stream that sort of, um, you can have it connected so it's showing on the phone what the unit is seeing. Um, it does work, I've tested it, the only thing is it's a little bit uh, laggy like most um, of those type devices are. Um, it takes up to a six, uh, 128 gig micro SD card in there. Um, that is a charging port in there, micro USB. Uh, you can also use for data transfer. And there is a HDMI mini out. Um, I believe that is for headphones or it could be for a microphone. I'm not sure. I'd have to look through the menu for that. Um, what else is there about it? Um, it has a two year warranty, um, limited warranty, um, but it has a warranty, so that's actually good. Um, the front, let's talk about the build quality a bit. All this front is all metal, um, where the bayonet connects, the IR luminos, the battery case, everything is like that, uh, is all metal. Um, the threads in that seem fine. Um, it takes a 21700 lithium battery. This one came supplied. Um, it's 4,800 milliamp hour. Um, I found it, I've used it for about, after its first charge, I used it for about three hours, and it was still sort of showing it had uh, about a quarter of it left. So I think it's claimed about four hours with IR Illuminator on and eight hours with not using the, the IR Illuminator. Um, when you're actually using it, so it is a day and night mode one. You can turn it to uh, colour for daytime use, and you can turn it to black and white, um, so it's an infrared um, camera. There is... Um, Digital zoom, as I said, you can get it all the way up to with optical zoom and then digital zoom as well. You can get up to 25 times magnification. This part here is actually removable and it shows a 3.1 inch um, display screen, LCD inside. The screen is fantastic. Now on here there is actually some plastic on there. It's like a, a set diopter. Um, so there's no actual adjustable diopter. That's a little bit of a problem for me, but I'll get onto that more later. Now another feature that this thing does, and I haven't been able to test, um, is... If you look on here, besides there being a camera mount, there's another three holes. And when you look on their store, there is a pro version available with this. And what it is, this bolts onto a mount and this becomes a standalone rifle scope, um, digital night vision rifle scope. So I haven't been able to test that um, just because I didn't get that kit. I just got the, the base one where it sort of clips onto the rear of, the, of a scope. But in the menu, you will see that there is um, options for a reticle. Now, when I sort of looked in there and I had a bit of a play with it, um, there's seven different reticles, um, some smart ones too, actually with good holdover markers and things like that. Um, and 
you so you can choose the red color you like whatever suits your application and then you can also change its color so there's red there's green um, there's black and there's white so you can set this up as a standalone scope and also obviously you can um, adjust the axis of the reticle and I think you can even recenter it into the screen but as I said I haven't used those features I haven't been able to test them because I didn't get that part I didn't get that kit the pro version also I noticed in the pro version was there is a rangefinder that clips on here plugs in here and displays the range on your screen inside the camera now that would be fantastic that would make this a different animal altogether but the fact you can mount it like that um, that would suit this size screen and having the fixed diopter because all of a sudden you've got quite long eye relief and that's not a problem as I said with it clipped on I found that um, I'm having a little bit of problem because there is no diopter adjustability in there and maybe um, just because my eyes at my age 46 years old my eyes don't focus quite as good as someone who's younger and I am noticing that I get a little bit of blurring so I have to hold my head further away um, while we're still on the build quality it's getting ahead of myself there okay so you obviously see some little picatinny mounts on there I guess you could arrange um, a separate IR illuminator or you could run a range finder on there anything like that um, the dials are very very smooth um, they've got a nice feedback um, they don't sort of there's no lumpiness or um, anything like that so one zoom one's focus so as I said it's got one to eight times optical zoom so that is uh, really really different I haven't seen that in any other type of units but um, the way they've done it is very smooth and the build of it is good uh, when it mounts up it's got a nice little metal pin it gives a nice positive click when you put it in um, as I said there's a rubber cover on that that's um I'm guessing it will give a bit of weather resistance when it's all plugged together um, buttons yeah nice and clicky very tactile I don't think you're gonna mistake not missing them there's also a a red laser dot pointer on there um, and it has adjustability for windage and elevation so you can use this as a standalone IR laser type sight um, or you can mark things for someone else to see when it's dark um, when you go through to turn it on you long press this the unit turns on um, if you you can put it in sleep mode while you're using it so you can give it a quick press and it goes the screen dims so it's a bit of a battery saving feature and then when you you see something that you're going to try and um, you need to use it you click that and the unit wakes up very fast and um, it's ready to go instantly with it whatever you had it set at already so that's a good battery saving feature um, you can change through as I said it's got 850 and 950 IR illuminators so I've sort of found it pretty handy because you can have one set to spot and one set to um, like a more flood level and sort of circumstances change you can quickly just go through the buttons and and change it but it's also it's not hard to uh, to push them in and out and focus them now I have found and I found on other models sometimes because of the way these IR illuminators work when you look through a scope because you set your sights and quite often the gun gets quite a bit of elevation when you look through your scope sometimes these illuminators are pointing up way too high and it's sometimes right off the target um, above it but these ones have got a little bit of movement in them now I'm not sure if it's done intentionally, but what it allows me to do is I can set it so that it's dead center of the reticle. So even on an air rifle, or I've been using an air rifle, um, air rifles, the barrel points up quite a lot. Um, so you, it's, they're very, very easy to have this, the reticle. Um, by the time you adjust it to suit the firearm and what you're aiming at, 50 meters, all of a sudden, the gun has a lot of elevation. And when you turn one of these IR illuminators on, it'll be illuminated way too high but with this i've been able to just push it down a little bit and i can actually make it too light if i want so you can actually move these and set these to suit the firearm itself um there is also a little bit of give in the actual mount so you can mount it um you can get a little bit of movement as you need to also help these illuminators to get them roughly right tighten them up and it stays it doesn't seem to move i haven't had no dramas with that um the quality and style of the mount um i probably should have had that here with me but i haven't so it's a collar a locking style collar you find um, the ring that sort of suits your rifle scope there's various thicknesses in there so there's four here um, and I've got one on the rifle so my rifle sort of like a 45 mil so you've got different thicknesses this goes in and over your scope and you tighten it up so you can just try the different ones so you can make it fit what scope um, make you can make this fit virtually any scope um, there's also little o-rings in there and there were some extra tools and that On to features in the menu 
Okay, I'm not sure. We'll see how this turns out. But uh, if you long press um, the, the center button, it brings up the menus. And once you're in the menus, you can scroll through and there's reticle adjustment. There's lots of different things you can do in there. You can change resolution. I think there's three screens all up. Um, it's a very user-friendly um, menu and it lets you make the adjustments that you would um, typically want to make quite quick and easy and just long press the center button and you're out of the menu. Okay, so there is Wi-Fi and an app. So if you um, join its Wi-Fi, oh, it's connected there already, all right, we'll jump out of that. Um, the app is this VF cam, you scan a code to get into it. Um, if I go to the camera, it's now seeing what the camera sees in real time. So if I move that camera, as you can see, there is a little bit of lag, but you can live stream it. So that is quite a handy feature to have. But also, more importantly, the thing that I found that it does really well is you can go back through um, photos and videos, and you can see I've already downloaded those, but I can say, click that one and download it. And that was a 64 megabyte file. Um, so a fairly fairly big file for a video And as you can see it um, it downloads it. It's not crashing or anything like that um, Which is good because sometimes in the past I've used some of the other brands um, I don't use their app because they just they're too buggy. They crash a lot. So this one's not buggy I've been using this it downloads it straight to my phone then I can go back to my gallery and There it is there. Oop, wrong one. There it is there and I can Play it with sound and the sounds very good on it. it records really good audio to be honest all right so we're um, taking this wild garter out I mounted it on um, a 22 PCP air rifle and um, we'll just wait till it gets dark and um, we'll just check and see if it moves the zero around and we'll see how it performs like off the shooting sticks all right so we've got some pellets in the gun We'll just, I put the attachment already on there and straightened it up. I haven't done it super tight, so I can sort of move it around and make it suit the gun. But it pretty much goes on like that until you hear the click. A couple of things I found. It's extremely long on the gun. This eyepiece is quite long. Um, it makes me have to get my head quite far away. Normally you want something probably about here, so it is a bit long, but we'll see how that actually affects it. <laughs> yeah, it's a mean little slug gun. Right here, I took the paper off. <laughs> no yeah. way. Okay, so now it is night time. Um, I'm using the three to nine scope. It's set at three at the moment. Um, the um, IR is I'm using the 850 IR, and as you can see, I can zoom it in. I can move it around too, which is very nice. I'll leave that. I'll leave that spread a little bit. I can't see these targets with my eyes anymore. So. Let's see if I can um, get some of these targets. I hope I haven't double fed that. I think I did. Anyway, let's try again. You can sort of see how it's looking. It says it's 50 metres. Alright, hit then, no worries. Um, while I'm doing that, as I said, it's just, um, I can move that around. That is the 850. And what I'll do is now, I'll just quickly go through, I'll do, dim it down, That's, and I'll just go to 950. So you can see the 950. Let's 
go to the, I'll turn the 950 in. You can see the 950 doesn't go quite as far, but it doesn't give a, um, a signature. Um, as a red light, you can't, it's not visible to animals the 950. Well, the 850 is a little bit visible to animals. So there again, 850. I can actually move that little light around a bit, and then I'll, um, See, it's, um, it's not changing my point of impact or anything like that. It looks quite good for the thing. I'm just noticing I do have to hold my head back a fair way. I don't get my normal cheek weld like I'd like. But um, as far as it, it's not changing the impact, and that's not changing the point of impact or anything at all. And the quality of the image looks really good. Now, what I'll do is now, I'll actually use the Scope the zoom in a bit, so I'll take it from 3 power to um, 9 power because this is where a lot of units will sort of let you down. So now I've got it at 12 power, I'll probably have to refocus the scope, get that clear. That's the wrong way, I think. That's the, when it, that dimming is actually my hand going in front of the IR illuminator. And now you can sort of see those bottles. So, so that's 9 power. Um, and you can sort of see it's still very clear. So, um, if you need to use your holdovers that you know on the mill dots, you need to be on nine power on a second focal plane scope. So, this is important. Oh, and I'm out of ammo. All right, um, I'll take this unit off and I'll just have a look at it not on the scope. But as you can see, that that's 50 meters and that is nine power. and um, that is a really good image. Um, I've got to say that. I'll give it a really, really high image quality. It's um, I can't knock that at all. Anyway, let's look at it not on the scope. Okay, so I've turned the unit sideways and use it in sort of um, landscape mode instead of portrait. And as you can see, those little targets are actually just down there. Um, I said that's about 50 meters. And I've got the zoom because this has optical zoom. I've got that backed off all the way, so that's one-time zoom. Anyway, we'll zoom in quickly. And I'll refocus. You can see at that same area where those targets are. You know, a little bit shaky there, this is me holding it handheld. But it gives you an idea about how it performs. Um, and you can also still, you can zoom that in to get much brighter. Now you can see they're really clear in there now. Except for me shaking, sorry about that. So I'm capturing this audio through the actual device. And um, I'm just going to show you, I've got a kangaroo sitting here while I'm doing some filming. But this is in daylight mode, so you can see it's colour. Now, um... I can zoom in, eight times zoom, just clean that focus up a bit, and that movement's me shaking, but as you can see, it makes a very good daytime image as well. Pros and cons, <clears throat> okay, we'll start off with some pros. Um, the fact that it's got the dual IR, so you can use the 850 or 950, so it suits everyone what their personal choices are, that's great. Um, the zoom feature, the 1-8 times zoom, optical zoom, not the digital zoom, um, that is fantastic. I haven't seen that in any other units, and it makes it really, really versatile. It makes it also much more versatile than some of the other units to use as a, um, as a spotting monocular as well. Um, the fact that it's got a little mini HDMI port out, that's brilliant. You can run back to screens, you can do things. The file format that it comes out at is um, good. My phone likes it. The app works good enough for um, to pull files down, put them on your phone, and you know, there's no crashes or like that. As I said, the live streaming is a little bit um, bit laggy, but, um, but the actual file transfer is great. Um, the instant start recording, you know, that's important. A, a lot of the ones I've used, you hold for a long press. Three seconds long on some of them. Um, you don't want to be waiting that long when you're about to take a shot. So the way they've laid the menu out is in that smart. You can set it up the way you like it, quickly turn it on and off, put it in the sleep mode. That's perfect. Much preferred method like that. Um, 18 650 batteries aren't in this one. Um, 21 700s, although a bit bigger, only a tiny bit. 
They just give you so much more run time. And um, I found that I'd, with this one, the average amount of time that you're looking for it, you probably don't need to carry a spare. Although, if you're on a big session, um, it's not a big drama. If you carry two of these, you're sort of going to get about eight hours or ten hours with IR on. Um, other pros are it is mountable to a firearm, as I said, if you get that um, in the pro kit where you get a mount. I haven't tested that, but the ability to put up the, the crosshairs, you know, seven different crosshairs, reticles, um, and choice of like red, green, white, or black to color it. You can really, really tailor this to how you want it. So when you um, mount this on a firearm, you can adjust it up. As I said, I haven't been able to test that, but just from a little bit of playing around, it looks like it's going to be very feasible, and it might be a better way suited to it considering the way the screen and the optics are. Um, the fact that you can take this end piece off, I guess that's a pro. You can use it as a monocular further away. Um, but as I said, when you're looking straight through there, I do find you can use it with both eyes open and see all that screen. That works quite nice. On to cons. Um, I'm not sure what to make of the cons. If you have it mounted onto the rifle directly, as I said, which I haven't been able to test, then the unit's further away from your eye, you've got a good eye relief. Then what happens is you've got something that's got a fantastic um, screen resolution and, that, and a good eye depth. But the way I've been using it, mounting it straight on, um, the unit's long in this form factor, and when you mount it on the rear of your scope, you have to hold your head back a bit. Um, that's not uncommon, the other ones do that, but this one's a little bit longer than, than my other units. Just a bit, maybe, you know, another inch and a half, two inches. That's, that's a lot, it's not for depending where it is. Um, but the fact that there's no diopter, it makes it hard. Okay, so I was doing the pros and cons, and I filmed this already. But um, since then, um, I contacted Wild Garter, and Keely got back to me at Wild Garter and, and said the engineers she spoke to. And what there was, inside the actual case, wrapped in the cleaning cloth, there's another lens. And that lens actually gets sat back in there and clips in behind three clips. And that lens allows you to bring your eye right up close. So that was the problem I was having. Um, there was nothing in the instructions or anything about it. It was just, I didn't realize it was there. Um, but Keely did send me a, um, a link over and explained to me that um, if you chuck that lens in, then as I said, you can bring it right up close to your eye. So those cons that I had, there was only two of them. One, the unit's a little bit longer than some of the others, and also um, I couldn't focus it down to my eye. So one of them has definitely been fixed. And the length, um, it's a tiny bit longer than some of the others, but with that, they all pretty much are a little bit too long. Um, sometimes if you're gonna use a rifle dedicated for using these, um, you actually set the scope a little bit more forward just to give you a little bit more eye relief. Um, and that's it. Um, so for the conclusion, I really like the unit. Um, Wild Garter seems to be a pretty new company, but also willing to try and make some products that are different than other people. The fact that they've gone 21700, you know, dual illuminos and zoom, that's just crazy, and none of the others are doing that. So um, I really like it, and I'm looking forward to using it, and um, I'm looking forward maybe to see what else Wild Guard has got, and if they want to work with me some more. Um, they did show some intent that maybe they'd like to see um, tested with the uh, users a standalone scope, I think, with that rail, and the, um, the built-in laser rangefinder displays the distance on the screen could be really, really good. So I'm excited to, uh, to try that as well. Anyway, on that note, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs it down, tell me why in the description, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.